So I'm going to pop on the left hand side and I'm going to go up to my toolpath manager on the left. I'm going to go up to my toolpath ribbon up top. Well, actually technically my machine ribbon because I do need to load in a mill and I am just going to grab Mastercam's placeholder mill, just their standard default mill. Again, whatever mill you're going to be programming these on, that's what you're going to use. Okay. All right, now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the uh, the three pockets. And for that, I'm just gonna pop up to my, um, again, toolpath manager, or sorry, toolpath ribbon up top. I'm gonna to go to my 2D gallery and I'm gonna grab a 2D high-speed dynamic mill. It's one of my favorite material removal toolpaths. And hopefully it's, it's one you guys use as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my machining regions here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, solids because I, I only have the bounty box and that's that's not for machining and I'll just do some loops and I'll just go ahead and chain on the bottom of those three pockets for those three loops again direction doesn't matter although I I do tend to usually do them in the same direction even though they don't quick preview chains that looks fine and we'll say okay and get into the actual tool path itself now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab for a tool just kind of a generic tool I'm just gonna grab a half inch flat end mill probably a little little sort of medium size for this, but that's what I want to use. Um, I'm going to go down to my cut parameters here. Uh, again, I got my step over, my stock to leave. They've told us that this thing is going to get uh, shot peened and tumbled and powder coated. So nobody cares about the finish. So I'm going to zero out my stocks. So no stock to leave on the wall or floor. Step over distance, I'll drop down to a sort of a reasonable 15% for this. Uh, shouldn't need any corner pre-treatment depth cuts. Breakthrough if you want it, sure. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of breakthrough just to get through the, the bottom there. Again, it depends on how you want to program it. Uh, linking parameters, uh, incremental and zero for depth since I chained on the bottom. That's where my depth is going to be. Uh, top of stock, I will set to the uh, top of the material or top of the part. That's 0.375. That's how thick our part is. Um, no additional thickness to it. And then I'll just go ahead and make my feed plane and retract 0.2. 0.25 incremental, so they're 0 0.2, 0 0.25 above wherever my top of stock is. Now, the other thing that we're going to look at, and I had to go turn mine off <laughs> before I showed it to you, because mine's always on by default, and we'll talk about that in a second. So that's a pretty good looking little dynamic mill. Um, I do need to get a, a bit of an entry motion, so we'll do a, a profile entry. It's my favorite. Um, and uh, Z clearance uh, will go, uh, again, maybe about 20,000 or so. I uh, don't need to go crazy with that. We'll go ahead and we'll green check that. And again, I generate what looks like a pretty decent looking, uh, you know, 2D high speed dynamic for each three of those pockets. Mm -hmm. 